Well, it sounds like you have been extremely successful in your career and that you've kind of done it your own rock and roll way. Do you have any advice for any young up and coming musicians or composers? Well, it's interesting you say really successful and, uh, you know, I don't really look at it that way. I think uh, the success for me, number one, is getting up every day and going, what should I do today? That's success. So I have uh, not, uh, I've steered away from really giant projects. Mm -hmm. And as a film composer, I've gotten offered some stuff that was really cheesy, you know, big time stuff that I know uh, is going to involve 50 emails a day mm. and notes about this. And I've tended to do a more boutique business and work one on one, especially I do a lot of self-funded stuff. So in doing that, I've taken a hit financially of what I could have done. So it's a different kind of success than I think other people have had. I'm 0 and 5 in the Grammys, and you know I don't really have a, a giant name outside of the industry, but I'm very happy. I love what I do. I work with great people. I have the best friends. I love uh, this whole industry, uh, the tribe of musicians. Mm -hmm. You know, it's very, very cool. Very. And uh, as far as advice to kids, uh, the number one thing that I see that is, uh, I'll start with a negative, unfortunately. I see lacking so much is a sense of history. Mm. It blows me away. The, the young kids I work with, super talented, <clears throat> smart, uh, but their lineage is unbelievable. I'll mention, you know, this or this. Well, who's that? Steely Dan, Doobie Brothers. Who's that? I mean, how can you not know that? And I'm not even in music and I know who they are. Right? Well, good for you. <laughs> you should be. And so imagine being a musician, and this, this one artist said to me, well, you're just saying that because you're old. Ouch. And I go, no, not out. It actually didn't hurt at all because I said, you know, let me tell you, when I was your age, I didn't have that little supercomputer you carry around in your butt that you used to find out what Kim Kardashian wore last night. <laughs> I didn't have that. I would have killed for that. But I knew the history of music when I was your age back to the 1700s. Wow. I knew Frankie Valley, Rudy Valley. I knew Fats Domino. I knew Fats Waller. I knew Scriab and I knew Stephen Foster. I transcribed Charlie Parker solo because I had a thirst to know all that stuff. Mm -hmm. So it blows me away that now you've got this device where you can know everything and how much ignorance I see of mm -hmm. lack of knowledge about history. It blows me away. And I think, you know, where's your curiosity? And the analogy I, I used would be Oh, so you're going to be a physicist, but you don't know who Albert Einstein is. That's, that's really how ridiculous that is mm -hmm. to me. So I don't want to be like the old man pointing, get off my lawn. But <laughs> man, you kids got to know your history. You got to know every Stevie Wonder record, right? You got to know all that stuff. You got to do your research. And it's just going to make your job easier because the hard work's been done. Mm -hmm. You're standing on the shoulders of giants. These records are unbelievable. These records from the 60s and 70s and 80s are just amazing records. And if you don't know that stuff, I, I just don't get it. And, you know, I, I spoke the other night for an AES thing. And some guy goes, you know, how do you get to be a producer like you? And I said, it's really easy. Just be really fucking good. Just get good at every aspect of the job. Mm -hmm. So you're irreplaceable. So when you walk in a room, you elevate that room. And not in an egotistical way, but you bring the whole level of the room up. And then when you're not there, they go, hey, we got to get that guy back in here, yeah. man. And when he's around, you know, stuff starts working. It's just, it's not that hard. And unfortunately, there's no, if you want to be a doctor, A plus B plus C, D, you know, you get your thing, then, 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 then. There's no path to this. So I think that makes it easier, not harder. That means I can be a R&B vinyl producer in Belgium with, you know, all girl bands, right? Yeah. So you can make whatever you want to make in here, but you just got to be great. You got to be great at what you do. That is the hard part. That's the easy part. <laughs>
<laughs> what kind of advice would you give to your young self? Uh, you know what? Well, first of all, I'd go write, write more songs. Mm -hmm. I, I didn't take myself seriously as a writer. I left a lot of money on the table there. I uh, also, I, th this is simple. I didn't take myself, I didn't give myself enough credit. A lot of it's coming from the Midwest and you're out here in LA and I would contribute an intro. Hey, what if we did this in the bridge? And uh, I'm a co-writer. But I didn't really have the kind of the balls to go, hey, you know, if you're going to use that, uh, I'm going to need 10%. Yeah. And I work with guys like Steve Luca. He's like, uh, the artist goes, hey, that hook is amazing. It makes the whole song. Oh, yeah? Good, 15%. And they go, <laughs> and he'd go, 15%. And he'd get 15%. Mm -hmm. But see, he grew up in that, in this environment. Mm -hmm. So he was nurtured to be part of that and ask for that. I just didn't know. Yeah. I was just happy to be here, you know? Yeah. So I would tell that young kid, no, you are good enough to get that, and, you know, don't settle for less. So. That's good advice. Yeah, it hurts to say it, actually, because <laughs> it really does, because uh, I, you know, sold myself so short when I was first getting started here, uh, just because I was happy to be in the room, and I'm sitting with these giants in these rooms. How did I get in this room? Well, it's because I'm great at what I do. Yeah. You know, and I didn't give myself enough credit for that. That's I do so now, fun. though. Yeah, hey. <laughs> no, I do. I actually do. I know. You know, so I, I did a gig for someone, and they said, "How much do you want?" Blah 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 blah. And how long will it take? No, no, no. You know, we figure we can do it in a day. Well, I walked in and I knocked this out in like three or four hours. And the guy goes, "Hey, you know, we agreed on that that rate, but you know, that was for the full day, and it's only." took three or four hours mm. and you know I, I I'm gonna pay you for four hours and I said it didn't take four hours it took 40 years for me to be that good like when I walk in the door what's in here and what's happened and what I've seen in my life and the music I've made with the artists I've made like that's amazing yeah and we should all know what we have you know uh, I'm a point zero zero one percentage experienced person on this planet. And to know that, and I'm not trying to like brag or be any kind of, you know, it's not boastful or anything like that, but just knowing who you are and knowing that what you have is rare. Mm -hmm. It's not like nobody else has that. You're yeah. special. It's Mr. Rogers. It really is. So I'm going to start crying. Oh. It's deep, man. It's very important. Very important to know.